Trust me, guys. If these horses were not making Budweiser money, they wouldn't have them. Hey, bitch, and welcome back to another Raleigh Reacts video. If you are new to my Raleigh Reacts videos, these are basically videos of me reacting to horse abuse, more specifically animal abuse. Just a disclaimer, these videos are just my opinion, so feel free to leave your opinion in the comment section down below. Now, all of my Raleigh Reacts videos are submission-based, so if you would like to send me a video to react to, you can send it to raleighreacts at gmail.com, right up there on the screen and in the description down below. You know, I get so many people who comment on my videos and say, oh my God, Raleigh's so negative all the time. Guys, I only react to and talk about topics that you guys want me to talk about. So if you guys want me to react to funny or interesting videos, send those. Today we have so many videos to get into, but before we do that, I have to say a huge massive thank you to Ana Luisa Jewelry for sponsoring this video. As you guys know, I recently released my new collection, Raleigh Link X Ana Luisa Jewelry, on their website a few weeks ago, and thank you so much to everybody who's purchased, who loves it. It means the world to me. I absolutely love this jewelry collection. I always wear their jewelry in all of my videos. Literally, the only jewelry I own is Ana Luisa jewelry for a myriad of reasons, not just because they have the best jewelry that lasts the longest and it's just the most beautiful jewelry I've ever seen, but also because they are an environmentally friendly and conscious brand, which is super important. Not only do they ensure that the production of their products is ethical, but they also offset their carbon footprint 100%. I don't think I've ever met a piece of jewelry on analuisa.com that I didn't like and fall in love with almost immediately. So when they asked me if I wanted to collaborate, I was obviously like over the moon about it because every single product that is on my page on their website is a product that I personally have and wear and have chosen and worked with them on creating. So definitely head on over to Ana Luisa Jewelry to check them out, you guys. I absolutely love love their jewelry. They really are just the absolute best. So thank you so much. That link is going to be one of the first ones in the description. So check it out. <sighs> we have so many interesting videos to watch. I wanted to start off by talking about Budweiser. You know, believe it or not, Budweiser has this insane, crazy fan group that just defends Budweiser until they die in their graves and are buried six feet under, which is just so bizarre to me. So I've really been refraining from talking about the Budweiser horse incident that happened a couple weeks ago for a while, because every time I see anybody call out Budweiser, rightfully so, for exploiting horses for profit, there's always so many people in the comments that are like, oh, Budweiser loves their horses. I live by their horses. I see their horses regularly. They're so well taken care of. They live like kings or queens. Guess what? None of that matters if the horse's quality of life is shitty. And for anybody to say that Budweiser doesn't exploit Clydesdales for profit, you're insanely delusional on a completely different level that I can't even explain. Budweiser's entire brand image are these Clydesdales. So yes, the Clydesdales make them money and are part of their brand. Every time you see the Budweiser Clydesdales, they're doing something that is making the company money. They don't just go to rodeos for fun. They're one of the main sponsors at rodeos. It makes them a lot of money. They don't just go to baseball games, football games, parades. They don't go to those events for fun, you guys. They go to those events because it's marketing. It makes them money. Sure, their horses are probably very well cared for, but Budweiser horses literally live more than 300 days of the year on a trailer or in a collapsible box stall. I can't even imagine what it would be like for an animal that is supposed to roam 30 to 40 miles a day 
and graze consistently. For them to be locked on a horse trailer traveling around the country 300 days out of the year, and then when they finally do get a break, they don't get turnout. They're put inside a little tiny box stall. Literally, look at this, you guys. These are their collapsible box stalls that they take everywhere that these Clydesdales live in. So again, anybody who wants to defend Budweiser, nobody is saying that Budweiser doesn't treat their horses well in a sense of take care of them food and water and grooming wise, they don't treat their horses well in a sense of their horses don't live like normal horses. They literally are traveling, living in smaller spaces than normal box stalls for more than like three fourths of the year. These horses literally live a worse life than horses that are stalled 24-7, which I just made an entire video about the dangers of stalling and why you should not ever stall your horse unless it's for medical reasons, which I will link that video if you want to go watch it. I highly recommend it. But it just really amazes me how many people are willing to die on that hill of just blatantly defending Budweiser when all they do is exploit these horses. Do you think these horses want to be doing this or do you think they would rather be out on pasture running around? And so a lot of people wanted me to react and give my opinion on the Budweiser Clydesdale video. Here's the thing. I actually think Rick Gore did a really good breakdown on this, which is funny because, you know, he got all the Budweiser people going over to his video just like, nee, 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 you know, and, you know, my only thoughts on this is anybody who thinks that a horse likes living 300 plus days of the year on a trailer you're just delusional and you don't know anything about horses animal psychology animal behavior you don't know anything about what you're talking about and there's just really no point in even trying to get through to somebody who's gonna think that that's okay trust me guys if these horses were not making budweiser money they wouldn't have them It definitely looks like they're at an auction. You know, honestly, I'm not trying to diagnose this because there's really no real way to know what this is without imaging, without being looked over by a real vet in person. But, you know, this looks an awful lot like a severe case of fistulous withers, which is a... Uh, chronic inflammatory disease of the bursa, which is basically a sac-like container. Now the bursa is filled with fluid and it's located near the spine. Usually when you see horses that have fistulous withers, it's, it's basically when the bursa becomes inflamed and it causes that bump looking thing on the horse's withers. This definitely uh, is like the most severe case I've ever seen of that. And again, I don't know if that's what it is. This is just pure speculation. The person who filmed this video put in the caption that they said that the horse wasn't in pain, highly doubtful. I know that they do surgery and that's really the only main way to treat this is going in and actually removing the infected tissue. Again, just speculation, but I think it's important for people to know what this is because this horse looks like a camel. If your horse's back starts looking like this and it looks like there's some weird growths happening on your horse's withers, definitely get that checked immediately because uh, fistulous withers can get worse over time if it's left untreated. And it's disgusting. I mean, I don't even want to show you guys photos of it because it's it's really one of the grosser uh, chronic diseases that horses can get. It's pretty bad. Yeah, man, that just makes me sad. It, I mean, it makes me sad too because this horse was very clearly auctioned off. They probably sold this horse to slaughter because who's going to buy a horse that looks like that? And I mean, last time I checked, the surgery is not cheap. So it's really depressing to see something like that. I, I really feel for the horse.
Yeah. Uh, I mean, obviously there's something deeper going on here. This horse definitely knows that she's standing there and he specifically kicked her. Horses are not stupid. They can aim their kicks and their strikes. This horse intentionally kicked her. I mean, you can see he's looking at her out of his peripheral vision. There's a lot of things wrong in this video. Clearly, I think there's some deeper relational issues between horse and rider. The horse could not like the rider for a specific reason. I have no idea. This horse could also just be young. The horse could have some behavioral problems related to health. I really don't know. It's impossible to tell. I don't think he kicked her that hard, otherwise you would probably see her fall over grabbing her abdomen in pain. If this horse was my horse, I would not be walking him on the reins like that. You know, contrary to popular belief, you actually have more control over a horse the more room that you give them on a lead. I've honestly never had any difficulty leading difficult horses by keeping a longer lead but I always have difficulty leading difficult horses when you keep a short lead. So again, I think there's deeper issues going on here. We don't know. It's difficult to assess if you're not there. So I'm trying to refrain from being judgmental. No, no, no. After the second person's horse fell the same way coming off the jump, I wouldn't have taken my horse on that course. Honestly, after seeing the first two riders' horses eat shit, they could have been severely injured, broken a leg. No way would I take my horse on that course. No way. It wouldn't happen. I'd be like, mm, seems dangerous. Not going to happen. Come on! So our leader at the moment I like how they show the one girl at the end who actually did it successfully, but barely. Who's to blame here? Obviously the course designers. That's one of the most dangerous jumps I've ever seen. And they're honestly really lucky that none of the horses broke their legs. But also the riders. I mean, the riders need to be held accountable too, because there's no way after the second person's horse ate shit the same exact way the first horse did, there's literally no way that I would continue riding my horse through that course. I would be like, yeah, you know what? My horse's life is actually worth more than a ribbon. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> so I just don't really have sympathy. I mean, these people intentionally put their horses at risk knowing that that was a dangerous jump. These riders walk the courses. I just think that riders should care more about their horses, especially in competition. So many riders sacrifice so much of their horse's life, health, and happiness for a ribbon. Why? Like, why is it that important to you? I don't know. Just, just this is the reason why I don't compete anymore. I, I had a lot of people ask me why, and it's just because I feel like it's difficult to have an invested relationship that goes beyond riding, that goes deeper than just surface level, which would be riding, when you're only focused on competing. Because when you go out to the barn, you're like, okay, let me grab my horse, warm him up, we're going to do our practicing, and then the horse goes right back to wherever the horse lives. Yeah, that's not really a relationship. You know, when I go out to see my horse, I sit with him in pasture for an hour and I'll read a book or like watch a podcast and he comes up to me and like smells me half the time. Sometimes he lays down next to me and we just kind of chill together. My relationship with my horse goes beyond surface level riding. And I think it's difficult to have a real relationship when all you care about is just getting a ribbon. And every time you go see them, you're just training. 
Anyway, guys, that is all I had for today's Raleigh Reacts video. Again, leave your comments down below. I'd love to know your thoughts and opinions on any of the videos that I reacted to, as well as definitely make sure to like, subscribe, turn your notifications on so you're notified whenever I post new content. And thank you again to Ana Luisa Jewelry for sponsoring this video. Their link is going to be the first one in the description. But anyway, guys, I love you, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.